This is Jocko Podcast number 96 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. And we are going to roll right into some Q&A from sure. people of the interwebs. Yes. Well, they're not actually of the interwebs. They're from right. around the world. Right, everyday life, yeah. but through the inter- interwebs. Is where we receive questions. Yeah. Cool. Yes. It's been a while, right, since Q&A? It has been a while since Q&A. That's cool. All right, well, first question. Recently, at my job, we got a new supervisor, one who happens to be retired Army after 20 years. He and I had a pretty heavy run-in, to which resulted in getting HR involved. The end result was that I would not be written up for what he claimed I was doing. He tried to make an example out of me almost as soon as he got here, assuming I was easy to he, he assumed I was an easy target. Anyways, to the point. Even though he and I had a falling out, I'd still like to see the guy succeed at his job and become a great leader. After listening to your podcast over the last month, I'm I'm making an effort to improve our relationship at this job instead of just avoiding the man. I've rec- I've recently purchased your book Extreme Ownership. How would you suggest I present this book to my new supervisor and read or to read without him feeling as if I'm belittling him as to say he needs work on his leadership? I think he could benefit from it greatly. Good question. Yeah, it's it's actually a question I've answered on here before, but I'll answer it again because I even learn when I repeat. Sure. This is my latest Version of what I tell people updated. when they're in the situation. Yeah, yeah. updated version Sure. because you get better at things and yeah. you figure out better ways to overcome challenges okay. Especially when you're presented with the same challenge over and over again, which I kind of am Yeah, man. Some challenges like this one. Sure. So here's what here's what you do. You give it to them and you say you know, hey boss or hey person hey, I got this book and I'm trying to really emulate the principles that are in this book, it, it really hit me. And I would, I was wondering if I could ask you a favor, if you could just look through this book, kind of see what the principles are, and then if you see me falling out of line with the principles that are in this book, let me know so I can fix them. Basic things like if I'm not taking ownership of problems, if I'm if I'm not keeping things simple, if I'm not supporting other people around me, covering and moving for them. Just let me know. That's all I'm asking because I'm, I'm really trying to do a better job. Could you do that for me? So then the person says, well, yeah, okay, fine. You know, and then they read the book. Mm. And when they read the book, sure, there's a chance that they'll be thinking like, oh, this book is about everyone else and it's not about me. Right. Right. That's possible. Mm. There is also a chance, a, a higher chance that they read the book and go, oof. I, I make a lot of excuses and I blame other people all the time. I'm probably not doing a great job as a leader. And that might be subconscious. I see that sometimes now where people are subconsciously making adjustments mm-hmm. because they don't want to admit that they're the person that's that that the problem. They don't right, want to admit that they're the problem, so they make these little adjustments kind of subconsciously. Yeah. And other people will tell me that the boss is like changing. Oh yeah, they're they're changing their game. Mm-hmm. They won't admit it, right. but they are changing their game. So that's what you hope for is that they do they go through that trans that transformation mm-hmm. from. You know, not taking ownership and treating people bad and not trying to build relationships and all that stuff that yeah. makes them into a bad leader into taking ownership, building relationships, covering, moving, keeping things simple, all the stuff that makes you a good leader. Yeah. That's what the hope is. Now, there's also a chance that this person's going to hold a grudge. Mm. Right? We, we, we got to deal with that. And I'll tell you, I was recently talking to someone that had stepped on the toes of another biz another division inside their business Mm -hmm. another sales division and you know salespeople are sort of known for being uh, protective and aggressive look protective Mm -hmm. of their territory well this guy kind of stepped into their territory a little bit caused caused some bad bad vibes giant rift and he's like you know what should i do you know i i feel like all this animosity now and it's one of those times where I just said to myself, well, what would I actually do if I was in that situation? How would I try and get this problem solved? Well, what I would do is walk up to the person who I stepped into their territory and caused problems, and I'd say, hey, hey, I wanted to tell you, I, I, I totally was out of line when I stepped into your territory. That, that was completely my fault. And, you know, I was just got target fixation, which is bad. I 
didn't talk to you, which is bad. I stepped into your world, which is bad. And I left the, a disaster. And I, I'm sorry. That's that all that stuff. Everything that I just said, all my fault. Mm-hmm. And I want to let you know that I completely recognize it. And number one, anything I can do to try and redeem that and, and make it up and make you realize that. And anything I can do to support and help you move forward. I, I don't I will not let that happen again. I just want to let you know that. So boom. Just step up, be humble, apologize, and say, hey, can you, what can I do to help you? What can I do to support you? That's where I would go with these, with this question, and then a sort of a, a, an addition to that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, uh, you know, when you, when you give your boss the book, right, and be mm-hmm. like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Is that kind of like when you, when you get, you know, like if someone has bad, bad breath, and then you put in gum, you know? Yeah. You eat some yeah, gum yeah. and you say, hey, you want some gum? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Same thing. that's very similar. You just break out the gum. You know, I always like to do this, you know, just to make sure. I always like to have a piece of gum just to make sure, you know. Yeah, not yeah, offend- yeah. Oh, you want one? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you can have. Yeah. You, may, you might want to take two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, check. Because you think, you're like, oh, wait. Yeah, shoot. What if I had bad breath in? Oh, let me let me handle this before anyone can smell it. You know? Check. Oh, I, you know that just reminded me because I laughed. Sure. It just reminded me of two things I just saw on the on the interwebs. One was a person that said something negative about about the podcast or the book, and he said, "Look, this guy should just smile. He doesn't. He never smiles and anything." And someone, of course, was like, "Dude, you might want to listen to his podcast because he laughs a lot." And then someone else said. This guy should just pick up a guitar. He doesn't. He doesn't know anything about freedom. <laughs> else. And someone else got on. Said he does play guitar. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. Haters, not not do a little fact checking with yeah, your hate. Yes, that's all I'm saying. Uh huh. If you want to throw some hate around, just do a little a little fact checking. Yeah. Because we're over here laughing. Yeah. We're playing the get box from time to time. <laughs> That's what you call it, the get box. The get box. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Yeah. By the way. You, you got to be old school on that one. <laughs> All right, next question. 